Good. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at mccarthys at amherstma.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at amherstma.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website <coughs> an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. With that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.36 p.m. and take a quick roll call. Hallie? Here. Doug? Here. And I am here, and uh, Dylan and Gaston are absent. So, uh, and then public comment is next on the agenda, and this is general public comment unrelated to anything on the agenda. And if there's anyone here for public comment, uh, you please raise your hand with the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And I do not think we have anyone making public comment. Um, okay, next up is licenses. New Common Victuals License Application CV-139-101 Amherst LLC doing business as 101 Tea House, 48 North Pleasant Street. And Steve, you said this is this is um, not an, exactly a new one, right? Yes, this is um, one of the owners of Vivi Tea, has, um, which is um, over by the works there in the fire station, is um, has... Uh, purchased the business, I believe, from his partner and is um, going to be operating. There's a name change, but I don't think there'll be um, many significant changes otherwise. So a new Colin Vic was needed for the new LLC, but that is about it. Okay. So um, nothing nothing has changed. Um, no new things or surprises. Any questions? If not, is there a motion to approve this license? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thanks. Um, take a vote. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. That license is approved. And now we have a common victualers license renewal application. And this one is for protocol LLC and has any, nothing has changed there. Correct, Steve? Renewal. No, yeah, it's just a renewal. Okay. Are there any questions about this renewal? No. Is there a motion to approve the renewal? So moved. Thanks. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, take a vote. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent and the renewal is approved. Next up is the lunch one lunch cart food truck license renewal application. El Sayed um, Abel Dagalil doing business as New York Halal Food. And is this a standard renewal for him? Yes, this is. Yes. Uh, yep. He's okay. Done. Done Great. Now. Any any questions about this? No. Okay. Is there a motion to approve this renewal? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thanks. Um, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent, and that renewal has been approved. Okay. These two. Our special short-term license applications, SST-24-15 and 15, uh, 16, Jen Lynn Fontaine, Top of the Campus Incorporated Wine and Malt, April 6th and April 20th at Garber Field at UMass. And this is the lacrosse, right, that we've done in a couple of years past. Yes, let me bring Bill in here. Oh, great, okay. Hi, Bill. Hi, you guys. How are you? Good. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. Good. So these are the licenses for the short terms for the men's lacrosse games. Yeah, right. There's two of them this year, and okay. uh, it, it's been the same for the past three years. The, the right. field itself is fenced in, and bartenders checking IDs, there's security at the gates, and keeping an eye on things, as well as the um, concession manager who will be there all day, so... Okay. I don't Fantastic. think there's been any I don't think there's been any issues in the past with anything 
So right, you you haven't had any incidents as no. I recall because you reported on them before. Okay, all right, great. Are there any questions about these two short-term applications? No, I no? think the things I want to know he told us. So okay, great. <laughs> all right, is there a motion to approve them? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent, and they are approved. So. Thank you so much for coming in, Bill, and best of luck. Thank you, guys. Take care. Right. You too. Bye. Okay, so on to our discussion topics. A, uh, marijuana regulation. Steve, do you have any updates? Yes, so I, I have been um, speaking with uh, different parties in town, the town manager and the building commissioner and uh, Kiko, the health director, about um, you know both uh, our licensing um moving forward and also um, about the issue of the unregulated hemp derived cannabis products. And um, we will hopefully all be meeting next week to kind of compare notes and see, um, you know, where uh, the town manager thinks this might be best addressed, uh, whether it be the license commission or the um, public health um, or health, the board of health, or, um, or maybe through the town council and, uh, what action should be taken on the unregulated stuff. So we will be discussing that and also, um, you know, what the town's path forward is with uh, marijuana regulation in general, because uh, as you may have seen from some of those KP law memoranda, there are a lot of changes in the law that are um, occurring yes. now and, and that are um, being considered. So um, hopefully we will get some more um, clarity from that. I mean, it seems like a, rough consensus from talking, you know, briefly, we haven't really met formally, but that it may be better for, you know, I think that any bylaw that, um, or any regulation, I should say, that is adopted um, targeting the uh, the uh, unlicensed um, hemp products would probably not be really quick because you kind of have to make sure you get it right in terms of legalities and authorities and, um, you know, what products are covered and which aren't. So um, with that effort going into it, it may be better for that effort to be, you um, uh, expended by the Board of Health, which would cover every establishment in town and not um, not just the, those licensed by the License Commission. So um, we'll have to review, you know, what those authorities are and, and where those things can come from. But I hope to um, to have uh, more information for you at our next meeting in two weeks and um, see that a chart, uh, a path forward is charted. But uh, definitely been bringing attention to this issue and um, and uh, I think it is it is under consideration. It really is shocking. I had no idea that any of that was going on but um i've seen yeah there was another globe editorial and um i'm seeing more news about it so it seems like uh it has um really blown up as an issue and gaston also told me he he saw that uh provisions was selling some products like this because um they said some of their customers um aren't um you know aren't interested in drinking alcohol and they want to have something available for them so i think huh. it was something that we will see more of Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, any questions about how that's, I mean, it'll give us a lot to talk about at the next meeting, for sure. I would just say I'm a little bit more comfortable with the Board of Health taking an oath over than us in our capabilities. Yeah, it is an interesting question where, um, you know, where these authorities can come from I mean, for the License Commission or the Board of Health. I mean, I don't know if, um, you know, I'm sure there's probably more latitude with the Board of Health regulations, although I'm not really familiar with um, exactly what the language is of whatever statute authorizes the Board of Health to take action. But um, I was talking to Kiko, and it's kind of a thought experiment, you know, is could the Board of Health, you know, they have some power to ban, um, uh, I think, adulterated adulterated food products is something that they have the power to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've definitely seen things like the styrofoam ban and, and things like that. But, you know, could, could the Board of Health or the Board of License Commissioners ban businesses from selling products containing caffeine or, um, you know, chamomile tea or melatonin? It's interesting to think about. And um, I'm sure that right. we'll have a lot of consultation with legal counsel as well. But um, it is an issue that I think is, is concerning to everybody who hears about it. So right. I don't think um, I don't think that it'll be something left on the back burner. Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you, Steve. That's, um... And I don't know if you guys got a chance to take a look at some of those other um, uh, licensing bylaws and regulations from other towns. 
yeah i've been <laughs> reading through them slowly they're really some of them are really interesting yeah mm -hmm. so if there's anything that anybody sees that they think would be good for um for us okay. to add i think that would be that would be good i mean i think something that um We'll be so, considering on the staff side is uh sorry mary i'll, I'll just finish my, my thought but i think something i'll be interesting to concern the the staff side would be um what you know what what the interests of the town really are sorry mary oh no that's okay i was just going to ask when the meeting was is it um, next week? hopefully next week we still have to um set a detailed agenda and schedule it but we are working on that okay all right uh, could you just let me know the date sure when I you schedule will. okay thank you so much All right, any other questions about this? If not, thank you so much, Steve. It's really, really helpful. Yeah, and if anybody else sees um, see those types of things being sold anywhere, it'd be interesting to hear about. Yeah, make a note, let us know, definitely. I think it's an issue that, I mean, I can't really think of any um, other federal law that's had such a gaping loophole ever, really. Um, yeah. But um, I think it's something that will need federal action at some point, but especially with the mail order aspect of everything, but um, or state action at the very least. But it'll be yeah, interesting definitely. to see how it all plays out. It seems like it's kind of reaching a critical mass of um, awareness. Right. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Steve? If not, thanks again, Steve. And please do let, let me know when that meeting is. Um, Absolutely. I don't like I'd love to be there. I don't it depends on what time it is. If that would be all right, if I could just is that okay or is it just a staff meeting? Um I think the town manager will be will be calling it. So I will I will definitely let him know that you're interested. Okay. All right. You know, if not, I understand, but um I if, at least to give me a like time to send you some input after I read some of those other regulations. Absolutely. I okay. will definitely I will definitely present it to him. I'm not sure exactly what uh he has he has some some bigger questions to answer about the the broader scope of the town's regulations. The host community agreements are changing quite a bit and there's some equity oh, requirements now okay. which um focus a lot on on notice and um you know the kind of things you wouldn't expect being central to, to equity, I guess. But uh, the whole whole broad broad um suite of things. So I'm not sure exactly in what order he'll want to tackle things. Oh, but. okay. All right, all right. Okay. All right, well, Thank you again. And let's talk now about the wage law violations at the two Plymouth establishments. So, and these, we approved these, and do you remember, I was trying to look up the exact date when we approved these license transfers, and that was in December, right? Yeah, I believe all, it was the last meeting in December, yeah. The last meeting in December. Did anyone have a, did anyone have, so this was a, like a, everyone read the blog post? that Gaston sent around about the two restaurants? I thought um, the comments, or at least when I read it, there was only one, two comments were a little oh, scathing okay. towards us, kind of asking why wasn't due diligence done? Also asking why didn't people travel to their other establishments? Well, that's and interesting. Yeah, perhaps so. if we had a budget to do that <laughs> and a driver maybe, but... Um, so I talked, I actually talked, I, I called the attorney general's office and I talked to the investigator and um, asked her what was going on. And I also looked up a couple of news articles. So um, the citation was issued to uh, the Plymouth, the owners of the Plymouth Public House and the Tavern on the Wharf on December 20th. It was not made public uh, until we, everybody heard about it on January, um, when was that? It was released to the news. They they did a press release at the around January nineteenth or twentieth, so we wouldn't have known. She said you can. There's a database that you can look. You can go to the attorney general's office and you can look at all of the complaints. They're all on. It looks like a almost like a spreadsheet. You know, one of those things where you type in your complaint and it lists who's complained against and the kind of violation, and you can kind of narrow it down and you can look at all the towns and see who's got a complaint against what. She says it doesn't, you wouldn't know if there's an ongoing case unless you called. So um, I also asked her specifically about, because half a million dollars is a lot, about what, what the dates that these were, kind of the, the offenses were, the civil offenses were. And she said one of them was from June 2021 
January 2021 to June 2022, and the other restaurant was December 21 to July 2022. So you'd have to kind of go back and look through the complaints and then phone the um, phone the attorney general's office and ask them. You can't request a public record really until the case is, I think you can get the, the a closed case. So the citation was issued on December 20th, 2023. They immediately settled the case and then they did the press release in January. I mean, by I mean they, I mean the, the owners of the, the restaurant, this, um, I think Paul Tupa is his name. So he also had another case against him for the Red Hat Cafe in Boston in 2020. Um, and it's interesting because he took over the building. He got the license transfer for Tavern on the Wharf. Wait, I'm getting in um, no, Plymouth Public House. The Plymouth Select Board unanimously voted in December of 2020 to transfer the license to him. But he actually, the press release for the Red Hat came out in October of 2020. So they knew um, they knew that they'd had this case ongoing against him before they they transferred the license to him. So, I mean, they granted it to him anyway, so because he settled that one also. Um, I don't know where else. Is there anything else that you need to? And she did give me some of the some of the violations. There are about half a dozen or more just uh, wage violations, uh, failure to pay service rates, failure to pay minimum wage. Uh, permissible work for 14 to 17 year olds, um, that kind of thing. So I don't know if it's, that's not something we really consider though when we're granting a liquor license, is it? Like it's, I mean, it's bad, not great publicity for them when they're coming into a new town. Um, but I also checked the Plymouth Select Board minutes to see if they renewed their license and they did renew their license um, at the end of December at the two Plymouth establishments right around the time that we would have transferred their license, the licenses to them too. So like, I don't know what we can do. Does anyone have any ideas beyond checking all of that out ahead of time? You know? Well, I think the, yeah. you know, the, the, the thing I'll say is this, is that, I mean, I think um, these are the kinds of things that we can consider and right. potentially reject the license for. So that's one thing, but, right. but I think that the most recent violation, you know, like you said, we wouldn't have known Right. Um, and again, a wage violation is a very different thing than what we generally are concerned about. We're much more concerned about their service and and uh, um, management of the alcohol. Right. I run an alcohol license, so I think I, I mean I think it's a, a thing we have to consider is whether that um, you know if they've if they've had an issue with you know sort of you know, wage law, and then they've corrected it. I mean, it does start to sound a little systemic because they've had a couple of different places that, right. that this happened. So that would be concerning. And at the same time, it kind of falls out of our purview. But at the same time, it's like, are they a good business for our, you know, we consider the sort of, I think the term in, right. is like the suitability of them as a vendor kind of thing is, is a, a consideration we can make. Right. Um, I mean, I think this is also, one, you know, kind of, Hindsight's 2020, we maybe should make that a part of our regular process is to look and see if there's other kinds of, of violations. If they hadn't had their one from 2020 um, that came out like in October, you know, we would we would not have known uh, October 21 or whatever it was. 2020, right. Yeah, we wouldn't have known, you know, the current one we would have no idea about because it just wouldn't have been available to us at all. So the, right. the, the historical one's the only one. And then the other thing is like, well, it's four years later, three and a half years later, do we still want right. to penalize them when they've you know, made amends and that sort of thing, you know, if, you know, it's, it's at this point, it's much easier to say, oh, that would have been a consideration. We might not have considered this as a good, a good fit for us because right. we have a lot of young people that want to work um, or, you know, and we, we have, you know, um, a, a very concerned community about, you know, proper pay for people around mm -hmm. minimum wage and all that sort of stuff. And so, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think as a as a body, we got to think about whether we want to add, you know, a quick check through the AG's office and and to see if there's other kinds of violations like that as a factor that we want to. I mean, this is a task we burdened Steve with to be, you know, yeah. with blunt, right? Because um, I don't think you can necessarily demand it of them. I mean, there's things on the alcohol application that involve alcohol violations, but not. Mm -hmm other kinds of things and you know they demonstrate proof that they've paid their taxes and are current on all their taxes 
Mm-hmm. So this is like another category, but it's not already, you know, in the mix. Um, I don't right. know. I'm, I'm not opposed. It, it, it just depends on how hard it is to search that 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 database because you know that's a pretty onerous process to 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 kind of go through to find, you know. It wasn't as it, hard. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, to you have to you can there are little boxes you can check so you can narrow it down to restaurants and you can pick the year. And you can even pick the kind of violation. And can you, can you, can you select kind of manager or license holder? Like, you know, uh, you, you I didn't. I didn't like not that I could see. There are about. Uh, you have to go through. I mean, it's like a spreadsheet. So you can go through, and there were about from 2020, 2022. There, there are roughly like eight or nine, eight or nine hundred a year in the state of Massachusetts. Right. So, um, I mean, there are even some in you know Amherst and Northampton, and right. that you don't hear about. Right. Um, because it's not necessarily an ongoing case, but um, I mean, it's not d- difficult. They don't always list the, some of them are listed by LLC and some of them are listed by restaurant name. So unless you, you know, unless you know, but I don't know that, you know, you, you could just see it and then I guess you could call up to the attorney general's office and ask them if that specific complaint is related somehow but um yeah if if we could do a search by because you know you can form an llc for every single you know business that you own and so you know it's it's one of the ways in which people sort of shift um focus off of a a controversial llc is to form a new one um and i think that's where it it gets weak to you know it's we wouldn't have much ability to sort of search things if if we can search by you know owner or board you know board members that kind of thing, right. you know, like like on on an alcohol application, you have to list, you know, sort of owner, board membership, et cetera, et cetera. You could, you know, if you can search by that, then it would be a much more useful tool, I think, given that it's much more based on, you know, like the LLC that's that holds a license or whatever. It's right. like, you know, it it you know, we wouldn't really know. Right. You know, I mean, the only other way we'd know is to ask them is like what other, you know, um, business ownership do you have in any other thing, you know, in any other community and, and in the state of Massachusetts. Was that, that does that call on the license, Steve, as a, because they do list the, some of the his right? Yeah, not they, necessarily they, would all list, of they would list previous uh, liquor licenses they've held and what corporation held that. Right. Um, and you can also use the Secretary of State's corporate database to search for um, people who are officers of um, a corporation, which wouldn't always capture the ownership, but generally mm-hmm. for small businesses, the officer are, are, is the ownership. Um, so that may be um, something. Right. I mean, I didn't get into with the inspector exactly how what happened. I said it was it a I said it was the bad management or you know whatever, but she wasn't. Um, just said that they had had these violations so and then I, I thought it's kind of like like with the abcc also issues violate has come through and issued violations tickets for selling to underage people and as far as i know that's more of a criminal offense and we still renew like we still renewed panda east because they as far as i know right and they yeah i mean i think i know the um it's, I mean, it's, it's all kind of wrapped up in case law, which makes it difficult to find hard and fast rules. But there is a lot of case law around the license renewal, and right. um, and the, the the state generally takes a pretty harsh look at um, discipline and um, and uh, non renewal for okay. you know outside of kind of egregious egregious things. Is they're very big on progressive discipline in the case law, right? Um, and so. Um, yeah, I, I also might bring attention to um, the town does have a um, wage and uh, tip uh, wage and tip theft bylaw that were part of the general bylaws that was adopted uh, oh. in 2020. And okay. um, the Board of License Commissioners, along with the town's human rights director, which I believe is now the DEI director, um, may um, draw up regulations and, and take complaints. So it may be a... Uh, a good time, and, and it should be noted, as, as Doug said, that these are separate LLCs. Right. Um, but um, but uh, it it's um, 
it may be a good time to take a look at that and, and maybe meet with her and see if um, there are any regulations the board would like to adopt. It also does kind of prescribe um, uh, if, you know, if a licensee who has been found in violation of um, our bylaw or a, you know, criminal or civil, civil judgment along the lines of this, if it was the same, the same corporation, it's not in this case, but the, the, light, the board of license commissioners could require to um, have them post a wage bond, which would be an amount three times the amount of the judgment to be held for um, a certain period of time. Um, it also says that a uh, prospective licensee shall disclose any criminal or civil judgment or other administrative action um, regarding these these types of things. So it may be a good time to um, to take a closer look at that bylaw and maybe consider if there are any regulations the board would like to to take. Sure, so, I think it's a, a good idea. I was just going to say, I didn't realize it had actually been enacted that long ago. Yeah. It was, I, had a, uh, I had a conversation with Pat DeAngelis uh, uh, of District 2 about it because she's the one that I believe was one of the primary uh, town councilors that brought it for, forward. Um, you know, and and I I know that I had some some conversations with some town staff about it because it it can impact the town as well. Um, you know, because of some of the components that are, that are potentially in it, and I think they I think they worked that out. But yeah, I think it's perhaps worth looking at if if and especially if we're named as a as an, a body that can do regulation, then it might be something we consider. And I think we consider it relative to you know issuing and renewing of license. Um, you know, I, I think there's complications with doing much research because it sounds like the search is a little tricky given what is listed on the on there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, not thinking that it's easy to add more to Steve's plate, but um, we do want people that are good uh, and fair business owners. We want them to, you know, tr you know, serve alcohol in a responsible way and all the other businesses and whatnot. And we want them to be good to their employees too. Mm -hmm. So definitely. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I was actually considering for um, other reasons, but um, certainly with this, um, there's one provision here in this, um, in this bylaw that, that says that a prospective licensee shall disclose any, any judgment or so forth. But um, I was thinking that it may be a good idea to have a, supplemental page on the liquor license applications for for our local questions um both about um ours is one thing that it baffles me is not in the state uh, application and we usually just end up taking that oh, testimony really? but it would nice to, be nice to have that written down but also uh -huh. to cover that um you know the, the, you know and ask them to disclose if there's been any previous violations because um there isn't any place for them to answer that so the onus would be on the applicant to know that this provision exists and that they should answer it um and um, and any other things that may um, that we may have have questions about. So you know, I think that would also be useful for our um, the food, uh, the alcohol food service regulations to kind of get some more clarity about their plan and have that on the record. So if the board is um, so inclined, I could try to draw up a draft of that that um, of the you know kind of a supplemental questions page that could be included in our applications. Oh yeah, sure, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else on this? Um, should we, do we need to invite them in to talk about it? What do you think? No? I, has, have they resolved the issue with the, with the state and with the, with the they, employees? Yeah they, yeah, they settled it. They settled the whole case. So, and then um, I think it was, like I said, they were issued the citation on December 20th, 2023, and then settled shortly thereafter. She didn't say exactly when. And then the press release went out on January of 2024, the 20th, 19th or 20th. So, was the press release from the business or from the state? It was from the state. It was from the attorney general's office. It was okay. like, I think it was a, they also, their, their 2020 violation, there was another press release from the attorney. Actually, was there? I, bookmarked it somewhere. I think, yes, I think there was a press release from the AGO, but it didn't make the papers in the way that this one did. I think because it was just really large. Right. Yeah. So. Anyway, so anything else? 
put it at it to talk about it for liquor license regulations. Yeah, I can, I can yeah, add a, um, I can certainly add a agenda item for next time about, uh, okay. um, that, uh, that bylaw we have and, and whether there are any regulations the board would like to adopt. Okay, great. Um, and so that'll go on upcoming meetings and agendas. So the next one is the, the 14th of March in person at 5.30. And Steve, you'll have an update on that meeting regarding the marijuana regulation. And then we can talk some more about the wage law violations and uh, alcohol, local alcohol regulation. And is there anything else? What's going on with the rental regulations? We haven't heard I heard it was, them. Um, I think it was a bit delayed with the changeover of the town council. Oh, okay. And um, I think they've been taking a bit of a recess to kind of get themselves situated as a new council. Okay. Um, so I believe it was going to the CRC again okay. this week. I'm not exactly sure how that turned out, but it was a bit on um, on pause for a little bit. Okay. And then the um, lunch trucks on Prey Street, you've been working on that, and that was successful in the fall. When are you thinking that that will start up again in the spring? I'll have to have some conversations with the town manager about um, whether that's something that could go again through his temporary authority or whether there'd need to be a town council um, bylaw authorizing it. So I do hope to have that conversation with him coming up as well. Okay. And then um, anything, any big new license applications coming up in not the that I am meeting. aware of okay um anything else for the agenda yes Doug. just a follow-up question talking about Prey Street um the building that is uh getting closer to completion not one east pleasant I think it's 11 yes next door oh, yeah um and I just asked this because of its proximity to Prey Street is is that coming online soon Steve, I'm just curious because that might influence our conversation and, and and the manager's sort of thoughts about about Prey Street as a food truck location. Yeah, I believe it is quite close and maybe partially occupied. Um, my understanding is that as of a few weeks ago, they had some issues with um, the energy code. Um, there was a difficulty where um, too much air was being turned over by the HVAC equipment, um, and they had to figure out what the problem was. So I'm not sure exactly how that turned out, but it was um, certainly getting very close besides that issue and also possibly partially occupied. Okay, thank you. All right, um, anything else for upcoming meetings and agendas? No? Um, okay, uh, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Any topics? I have none. No. Doug, just one confirmation so we're meeting the 14th and then we're going to meet the 28th um, we... yes okay i just want to get it in my schedule so i don't you know double book oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, and the 14th yeah. would be in person right yes and then the 28th is online 5 30 zoom okay great well if there's nothing else is there anything else I'll move nope. to adjourn. Excellent. Thank you. We'll second, second that. Wonderful. Uh, we'll take a vote. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye uh, three to zero with two absent. We're adjourned at 6.09 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Uh, all. See, you see you on the 14th. Bye. Thank you, Steve. Bye. Thank you Bye. all.